This is Ling270, Language, Technology, and Society. We will now continue our exploration on the origins of writing, looking in detail at the Rebus Principle. First of all, let's define the term rebus. A rebus is a visual puzzle that uses symbols to represent words or phrases. Let's now take a look at an example of a rebus. Here we have an example of a rebus. There are four symbols in a row. The first symbol is an eye, the second a can, the third a wave, and the fourth a sheep. Let's look at what this means. In order to determine meaning, we are going to use the Rebus Principle. The Rebus Principle is the use of symbols to represent other words using the sounds that correspond to the pronunciation of the symbols. So, here is our example. First, we have an I, a body part. Next, we have a can of soup or vegetables, so that's a can. We will interpret the picture of a wave as being a representation of an ocean, or more specifically, a sea. And finally, the sheep is a female sheep, and the specialized word for a female sheep in English is a U, E-W-E. So, we have an I, a can, a, a wave representing a C, and a sheep representing a U. So, I, the body part, sounds like I, the pronoun. Can, the noun, representing the object, sounds like the English verb can. See, meaning a body of water, sounds like the English verb to see, as in to visualize, to visually recognize something. And finally, you, the word for a female sheep, sounds like the English pronoun you. Thus, using the Rebus principle, we can decode the message, I can see you. This is an example where an entire sentence is represented using the Rebus principle. Let's look at another example of the Rebus principle in action. In this example, the Rebus principle will be used by one person to convey a question, and then by the recipient to convey a response to the question. In the 18th century, the philosopher Voltaire visited the Prussian noble Frederick the Great. During this visit, Frederick presented a note to Voltaire containing the following message. This message has two fractions with a French word in between and a question mark at the end. The first fraction is the letter P in the numerator with two hands in the denominator. This could be interpreted as two hands under the letter P. The word after this initial fraction is the French word for at, an A with an accent mark. The next fraction has a saw, a tool, in the numerator, and the number 100 in the denominator. We could interpret this as a hundred under a saw, or hundred under saw. And finally, 
we have a question mark. So, this is how we, as English speakers, might interpret this. But we need to remember that the Rebus principle is language-specific in its use. And the two individuals involved here were conversing in French. So, how would Voltaire, upon receiving this message, have it interpreted the first fraction, which we see as two hands under P. Well, in French, two hands under P would be the phrase du mon soupe, where du is two, main is hands, su is under, and pe is the letter P. Next, we don't have to do any interesting interpretation because the next symbol is a word in French. The accented A meaning the French word for at. The next fraction, hundred under saw, in French would be saint souci, hundred under saw. And the question mark in French would still be a question mark. So, Upon sounding out the rebus, how would Voltaire have interpreted this? In other words, what French words and phrases did the sounded out message sound like? So, two hands under P in French would be du ma soupe. Voltaire would have recognized this as sounding very similar to the two word French phrase. Demain super. The next symbol, the accented A, Voltaire would have just interpreted as the French word for at. And finally, the fraction, 100 under saw, which in French is saint souci, sounds very similar to the name of the palace where the two men were at. Sanssouci Palace. Sanssouci sounds like Sanssouci. And finally, the question mark is the question mark. So at this point, Voltaire would have successfully understood the intended message, which in English translates to supper tomorrow at Sanssouci. So Frederick the Great was inviting Voltaire to supper. Voltaire then responded in like manner, also with a rebus. Voltaire's message only used alphabetic symbols, as opposed to the other kinds of symbols, the non-alphabetic symbols that Frederick used with hands and the saw. Frederick's message was a capital G followed by a lowercase a and then an exclamation point. So even though this looks like a word, it's not actually intended to be a word. Rather, its interpretation is intended to be uh, found through the application of the Rebus principle. So let's look at the symbols. What's the first symbol? Well, it's a capital G or a big G. And the next symbol is a lowercase a or a small a. And then the exclamation point. So what would this be in French? Well, big G, big letter G, in French would be je, which is just the letter G, and grand, which means big. So je grand. And then the next symbol, small a, would be a petit. So a, the letter a, petit, which is the word for small. So we've got big G, small a, in French is je grand a petit, followed by the exclamation point. So Frederick, getting this message, would have sounded this out and gotten je grand a petit which he would have then recognized that je grand 
j'ai grand, the big G, sounds like the two-word French phrase j'ai grand, and a petit sounds like the French word a petit, which means I am very hungry. J'ai grand a petit. So at this point, Frederick would have successfully invited Voltaire to dinner, and Voltaire responds, accepting the invitation. So we've now examined the rebus principle in action. Let's recap. A rebus is a visual puzzle that uses symbols to represent words or phrases. The rebus principle is the use of symbols to represent other words using the sounds that correspond to the pronunciation of the symbols. We looked at an example that was I can see you by having the, the picture for an eye, a can, a wave, and a sheep that was interpreted as I can see you, which sounds like the English sentence I can see you. We also looked at the example of Frederick the Great and Voltaire, and we recognized that the Rebus principle is language specific.